Okay, Dr. Anthony Fauci now admitting social distancing wasn't based on science. Fauci telling a House committee this week the idea, standing six feet apart, quote, just sort of appeared. The shocking admission comes nearly four years after statements like this. Every aspect of that ending the COVID outbreak in 30 days has some aspect of it of physical separation, whether that's avoiding crowds, whether that's staying six feet away from people, whether that's doing teleworking, all of it does that. That's our most important tool. Here with Reaction, Fox News medical contributor, Dr. Mark Siegel. So, Dr. Siegel, I want to get your reaction, but do you remember the great links that schools went to to separate desks, to put up plexiglass, the links that we all went, went through when we were in the grocery store, standing six feet apart, people would yell at you if you got too close to them. All of that for nothing. There's no scientific proof that that even worked. It came from somewhere, Ainsley, and I'll tell you where it came from in a minute. But what I want to say is the biggest damage was done by extending it past a couple of weeks to slow down the initial surge of hospitalizations in New York. That we didn't know what to do. Uh, but the problem is the science that started to emerge after that is contrary to what this came from. It didn't come from nowhere, the way Dr. Fauci said. It came from 1918 science. That's what it was. In 1918, we had a flu virus which actually didn't go as far as COVID, didn't spread all over the place. It rode along the flu on large droplets. So in St. Louis, Dr. Max Starkoff, who was the city health commissioner, and in Washington state, Thomas Tuttle, epidemiologist, they shut things down and they had an impact. But it's a different virus. And here, as early as February 2020, Ainsley, we found out in Nebraska, and I was out there interviewing the researchers, they said, COVID's all over the room. COVID spreading through communities. So the idea of social distancing didn't come out of nowhere, but it came out of 1918, and we already knew better. And you made the most important point of all. It wasn't, it was one thing to say six feet apart, but a lot of poor schools couldn't do that. So they closed. And they missed the main thing they should have done, which was ventilation, opening windows. That actually has an impact. So he wrote along on 1918 science and stuck with it. Just, it's so upsetting because, um we went through so much during that period, and it seems like every time we learned something new from Dr. Fauci, it was all made up. I mean, it didn't even have well, direction. There was no science there. And I got to also point out, I and many others warned in early 2020 that it was going to have extreme collateral damage on our children, that they were going to have learning problems as a result, socialization. And now he's saying there's no, there's no proof of that. There's total proof <laughs> of that, and it took the New York Times three years to come along and all agree right, with talk that. A, let's talk about Jelly Roll. He's been here at Fox & Friends, and he connects with with his audience. He's a rapper, he's a singer, um, and you know, very famous throughout the country now. He's been in prison, he sold drugs, uh, says he can't even vote anymore because of his, his rap sheet, a long rap sheet. He's gotten clean now, and now he's going to Capitol Hill. He talked to Senate, the Senate about this uh, Fend Off Fentanyl Act, which will implement sanctions to reduce the flow of fentanyl. And he tells his story. Listen to this, and we'll talk about it on the back end. I've attended more funerals than I care to share with y'all. This committee, I could sit here and cry for days about the caskets I've carried of people I loved dearly, deeply, in my soul, good people. I was a part of the problem. I am here now standing as a man that wants to be a part of the solution. Wow, what's your reaction? I love the power of that, the personal appeal that he's been through it. He says cooking these things together in his own kitchen, the way the drug dealers are putting it together in these 10-foot labs. Very, very powerful. His song, Save Me, uh, Need a Favor, all speaking, please save me, God, before I die from this, mm -hmm. is going to have an impact. I like this bill a lot, Fend Off, fend off Fentanyl. Mm -hmm. The problem is, and it's bipartisan, the problem is, Drug sanctions like this aren't the answer, are they? They're a step in the right direction. The answer is closing the border. No matter what happens, fentanyl will zoom across the border, no matter how many financial sanctions you put on it. And by the way, now there's something called benzo dope, which combines fentanyl with something like Xanax, a strong Xanax. So even if I use Narcan to reverse it, it won't work. We'll be more and more overdose deaths from people stopping breathing. And the only solution is to close the border. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.